Working with Node! Oh, we're almost done. So the other thing that I do is I work a lot with Node and uh, I especially use different Node packages as utilities to run on the computer. I also write Node code, but that's a separate topic for another tutorial, but I write Node code with the with a, with the, with a text editor and run commands via the terminal, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so let's come back um, here and see. Now, do I have Node installed? I'm gonna just type Node. I know I have Node installed because it gave me that prompt. So this is how I can actually just type JavaScript in an interactive way, like I could say let x equal five, and then I can say x, and it shows me five. This is like an interactive console here, and then I can just say, I think, control C, and I can get out of that. Now, um, I'm gonna just go back to the desktop, and so I have Node installed. If you don't have Node installed, there are many different ways you can install it, but I think if you go to nodejs.org, um, you can get it. Now let's see what version I have. This is probably gonna be very embarrassing. Oh, not so embarrassing, 10.8. So you can see I'm a little bit behind, but then this is recommended, but you know, live on the edge. There obviously are key things in certain versions. Most of the stuff that I'm doing, it doesn't matter so much. Um, so I have a fairly recent version. Now, do I have something called NPM? NPM should come with Node when you've installed it, but just to be sure, I'm gonna type NPM, and it looks like I have it because it's not saying it doesn't know what it is. So NPM is Node Package Manager. It's how I am going to install Node packages. And I'm gonna show you something really important right now. So what I wanna do first is, uh, let's use HTTP Server. HTTP Server is a way, actually, yeah, um, yeah Let's use HTTP server. HTTP server is a node package for running a web server from the console on your computer. And you could use it for other things too. So I want, normally a node package is something, a module that you install for a particular project and it lives with that project. I'm gonna install this globally because I wanna use it as a global utility on my computer. But there's two, multiple kinds of global that you might not be aware of. So I'm gonna now say um, npm install uh, what was it called? HTTP server dash G, the dash G for global. And I know there's something called yarn, which is another way of installing node packages, but you know, oh, I can't do everything new all the time. So I'm gonna hit enter and it, it's gonna give me an error. This error is so common and it's a permissions error. It's like, I don't have authority to install something global on your computer and you're gonna be tempted to do this. sudo npm install HTTP dash server dash G. What this means, sudo means super user do, and it's saying like, you know what, I do have permission. I'm the administrator of this computer. I want this to be global across all users of the computer. But that actually is probably not what you want. What you more likely want is global packages, but for you, the, the in your home user account. It's a fine line, but your computer has stuff installed in a like really further, more, further down the chain of file directories that are that are any user can use, like the applications, or it has configurations of things for just the user that's logged in. So there is a way to deal with this, and the way to do that is, I'm gonna just look for fix permissions NPM. There's a guide for it on uh, the NPM website, and it's, the way that I like to do this is this. So I wanna make a hidden directory called NPM global, so I'm just gonna copy this right from here. And I'm gonna put it in here. Then I want to tell NPM that that's where I want my global packages to be. Now here's the thing. Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna want me to add that to the path. Because I'm adding something new that the computer needs to know to look there to find things, it needs to be part of the path, but guess what? Uh, maybe not dot profile. This is the default bash profile. Actually, what I wanna do is take this, since I'm using ZSH, but again, and I wanna say um, uh, code uh, dot ZSHRC. So I wanna edit this file. I'm gonna add another thing. I'm gonna add it, the path here. So it should be available. And then I'm gonna say source to reactivate it. I only have to do this once or I could restart terminal. And then now I should be, that's a little variation of this. That's what's happened, that's the equivalent of this. And now I should be able to say, without sudo, no sudo, do this, install, and look, it did it. And guess what, I'm gonna go to the finder. I'm gonna look here, there's a new hidden directory 
called npm global bin http server lib this is where it lives so a lot of times this stuff seems like magic it's just putting more files on your computer and then telling you about where they are and, and you have uh, and staving where that stuff is in the path variable okay so now we've got http server this means that i can just run http server there you go i'm running a server i'll show you why i want to do that in a second but instead i'm going to the next thing i'm going to do is going to do npm install p5 manager dash g so this is installing p5 manager take a little second there okay installed and now um now i can do things like p5 generate dash dash bundle uh, my project my sketch or something so i can create a p5 sketch and it actually just created all of these files i can go cd my sketch now the truth of the matter is p5 the b5 manager has comes with its own server but for whatever weird reason i'm uh, just used to using http server if i hit command and i click on this it will open it in the browser and there's the sketch now there's nothing appearing so maybe i want to edit it now here's another thing i'm going to show you <laughs> i've got the server running here so ah, I don't want to stop the server, but I want to do more stuff in the console. I can hit Command T and that opens a new tab, but I'm not in the same directory. So if I want to be in the same directory, um, I'm going to go to uh, Preferences again, and I'm going to go to Profiles under Default. And I could create different profiles with different settings, but this is what I want. I want to reuse previous sessions directory. So if I click that, and then I close it and I hit, now I hit Command T for a new tab. There we go. I'm still in my sketch. I can do code dot. I've now, I've now looking at my sketch in Visual Studio Code. I will add background 255 comma 0 comma 100. It will auto format it when I hit save. And then I'm going to come back here and hit refresh. Oh no, where's the new code? So this is really a key thing. Browsers want a cache all the time so there's many ways around this but uh, and by the way i didn't even show you 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 might look like this for you i did something like without even thinking about it i always while i'm working like to have the developer tools open view developer javascript console i usually open it by doing option command j and there it is and then i, I want to make that font bigger so you can see it but there's a really important setting that is really going to help you out uh, settings and I can go down under network. I like this one, disable cache while dev tools are open. So this will mean it'll always reload any changes in your code while you have those dev tools open. The browser won't cache it by accident. So now if I select that and I hit, uh, if I hit refresh here, there we go. We've got the, uh, the P5 sketch. Now here's the thing. What if you wanted to just reload? Now, now so if I change it, 100 comma 255, I've got to go back into the browser and hit refresh, which is fine. I don't mind doing that. But I could also control C out of HTTP server. I could say npm install live server dash G. This is a different server package. And again, I'm sure Visual Studio Code has plugin as extensions for running servers. So you don't have to, there's so many different ways of doing this. No one way is correct. But now if I do live server, because it launched it automatically. And then if I change the code 255 comma 0 comma 100 and hit save, mm, let's see, it detected it. I wonder why it didn't change. Did I not hit save? I've seen this happen before. If I hit refresh, it's, oh, live, maybe live reload enabled didn't get enabled. Let me see. But let me try this again. I don't know why that didn't work. And I'm going to say 100, 0, 255, hit save, and it changed. Yeah, so we can actually, you know, if I were more thoughtful about this and put this over here and put this here so you can kind of see it, um, you can see it's just changing every time I hit save. I know I'm standing in front of the code, um, but, but that's, it's going to update uh, dynamically. So that's something that can be useful if you want it to live reload um, all the time. All right. 
So this is pretty much my entire workflow. I think this is, I, I, I would like to make a video about setting up virtual environment for Python. I, I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, so that I, I'm gonna use that for some projects in the future. But this is pretty much everything I use. So many things are missing. So many people in the chat are like posting their suggestions or this text editor or oh, this thing called TMX maybe is really good for ZSH. So I, I encourage you to put all that stuff in the comments of these videos and maybe we can make a readme file that people can contribute to. But this is basically it. Most of the time I try to use these all-in-one kind of packages for coding. I would also mention Glitch, which allows you to do node stuff as well. Glitch.com is a great one. Open Processing is a great one. But when I'm working locally on the computer, I use a text editor. I'm trying to use Visual Studio Code. I need console access to do run shell commands. I'm using iTerm with ZSH, configured with D-O-My-ZSH. Uh, I'm do, I do all my git commands there, I do all my node commands there, I use these node global packages, and there's one other thing I thought of. So the one other thing that I thought of is actually this P5 manager, um, I all, all often, you'll notice when it created the sketch, it made a, it, it had like set up and draw in it, it had some stuff in index.html already. This is a template that you can modify. So you can actually go in, by the way, where, you can find it now, right? P5 manager, probably somewhere in here is that, no, this is the source code for it. Generator, libraries, templates, ah, there we go. Look, so this is the template. So I could actually modify this and I could probably make different templates. You'd have to look in the documentation. Where do you find out about node packages? You know, Google them, you'll find the GitHub repo or um, there's a, all the, no, every node package is at um, npm, uh, npmjs.org. So if I were to search for P5 manager, um, I have some videos on P5 manager itself we could find out here that there is more documentation for all the different things you can do with it. So everything to infinity, I could keep going about all these things. One other question, sorry, one other question in the chat. How is opening server URL different from opening an HTML file? This is a great question. I'm glad you asked that. Those of you who actually somehow managed to watch till the end of this video are gonna get a little bonus here, right? This, my sketch, I can just click this index.html and there it is in the browser also. And I can open up here, like there it is running, but this is dangerous. <laughs> Living dangerously is not the worst idea. File, users temporary train. I'm opening it through the file system. A lot of things don't work. I, I would expect that webcam access, access to the microphone, loading image files won't work. There'll be all these errors because it's not hosted properly through a server. And so you'll notice here, the sketch is hosted through a server. And so this is going to, it's just safer and it sort of emulates the real experience of publishing your project to the web somewhere. So generally I try to stick to that habit, but you're right, for quick working, just opening it as, a, as through the file system will work. Okay, um, thank you everybody for watching this series of videos about my current workflow. It's a little weird to make this, before I actually start using the workflow more. But uh, so things will change. And if you can continue to watch my videos, ask your questions. Thank you. I kiss my fingers like a chef. Goodbye from the coding train.